there's no question we can use help when it comes to curing cancer. We need all the strategies that we can, both from the mainstream of medicine as well as from complementary and alternative medicine. And once in a while, something comes along that offers great promise, and I want to tell you about that today. It's, a, it's, a, it's an herb, a Chinese herb called artemisinin. And it's been around for thousands of years, and it's been rediscovered in the last 30 or 40 years and brought back into clinical practice. It's used for malaria and it's used for the treatment of cancer. In fact, there is a, a drug that's out, that's approved by the FDA for its use in the treatment of malaria. It happens to be something that's safe, that's a chemotherapy. It's easy to use because it's just in pill form taken a couple times a day. It's inexpensive and it works on all cancers. What more could you ask for? And yet it hasn't found its way into the mainstream. And largely because we don't have a lot of communication between the mainstream oncologists and from people who practice complementary and alternative medicine. And as we all know, that needs to be improved. That situation needs to become one that's more collaborative. And of course, we need to legalize it as well. Legalize that we do things besides chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery in the practice of medicine as we're treating cancer. Because in the state of California, as in some others, it's a felony to try anything except for surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. Fortunately, California Citizens for Health is doing some group now under the direction of Frank Cooney to, to, do, to make a difference, to make a change, so that we can repeal that law and be able to begin to do more integrative practice. Now let's look a little bit at, about what artemisinin does. It's a very inter interesting uh, drug that works and takes advantage of the fact that cancer cells and infected cells accumulate iron. So they have an affinity for it and actually tends to make bacteria and also makes cancer cells grow. So when they, can, they sequester this iron, they have more of it than other tissues do, other normal tissues. So when you look at, say, a leukemia cell, you may have like a thousand times more iron in it, or a breast cancer cell may have 15 times more iron in it than other cells that are uh, like themselves but not cancerous. And what happens with the, in the case of artemisinin is that when it comes into the body, it's sequestered and it comes into the cell. When iron is there in large amounts, it causes a release of two oxygen molecules that form free radicals that are so powerful that they kill the cell. This doesn't happen in normal cells. It only happens in cells that sequester a lot of iron. So all of a sudden we have a treatment here that has a remarkable potential, at least in theory, to doing some big things to be able to kill cancer cells without toxicity to the person who's taking it. That's a revolutionary change that we should be looking at. We need studies sponsored by the National Institutes of Health that can look at that, and I'm hoping that sometime that will happen soon. In the in vitro studies, which means in the test tube studies that have been done that look at the effect of artemisinin on cancer cells, what they have found is that it's pretty effective in, in, in killing those cells. In fact, with breast cancer cells, about 28% of the cells are gone within about 16 hours if they're cancerous. And if you add iron to that, uh, that, that uh, combination, it's more like 98% of the cells are gone in about 16 hours. So that's pretty powerful treatment. In the case of leukemia, in only eight hours, about 100% of the cells that are cancerous are destroyed. Now, some doctors have a concern about using iron uh, along with artemisinin. And the reason for that is, is because what we don't want to do is cause those reactions to occur in normal cells. And while that's a concern, that hasn't been shown to be a, a problem. Uh, and yet, because cancer cells tend to accumulate iron and infected cells tend to accumulate iron, the fear is that it could propagate the cancer or the infection as well. So that's something that we're going to have to probably wait on, although in a case that's really serious where somebody's tried every possible treatment that there is, from one point of view, uh, and that's the fact that it's an FDA approved drug, you could use it as a off-label use uh, and and, and still have an effect, but still those laws that are strict that regulate uh, what you can do in cancer therapy, like in the state of California, need to be repealed. Now, artemisinin works in just about every kind of cancer, whether it be a prostate or a breast or colon or even tongue or even some sarcomas, which are notoriously difficult to treat. 
We know that there are three different forms of artemisinin. Uh, you can have either artemisinin itself or something called, art, called artesunate or artemether. Uh, they can be taken orally or by suppository. They should be taken in, in pulse doses, which means it should be on for a few days and off for a few days because the intestinal tract tends to not absorb it so well if you take it for long periods of time. And then above all, we need to know that it's safe. And in 4,000 people who have been treated with artemisinin, we have found that the safety profile is shockingly good. Sometimes that's what you see when you use natural products, as, as in the case of artemisinin. So we have something to look at here that could be a consideration in anybody who's gone through standard therapy uh, using surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy, had a very poor result, and maybe are in, in the process of dying within a short period of time, therapies like this or these should be considered because they may be something that could save lives. And there are lots of anecdotal cases that are very interesting that show exactly that. biggest fears in getting a diagnosis of cancer is the treatment. And the conventional mainstream treatments can be pretty toxic and can sometimes be disfiguring. You know, we've made great strides in chemotherapy and radiation therapy over the last 25 or 30 years, but it's still a big deal. And it's toxic. There's no question that the, that the treatments that we use injure both the cancer cells as well as normal cells. And so we wind up with a problem with lots of symptoms most of the time. So if you knew of a non-toxic herb mm -hmm. with an outstanding safety profile that you could take in a pill four days a week that could kill the cancer cells and not damage the healthy cells, I mean, wouldn't that sound like a dream come true? Absolutely. And it's such a shame that we don't have research that can back up as much as we deserve to have on artemisinin, which is what we're going to talk about in large part today. Uh, it's, it's too bad. There have been some wonderful studies, and they're posted on my website on drsabuta.com, which, by the way, is a completely free website. We sell nothing, have no ads. So this is a site that's only as a public service. And if you go there, you'll get a lot of that research there that will help you and your oncologist to understand what this drug or this chemical that's from wormwood extract could do. Well, you know, over 500,000 people have viewed the drsabuta.com Fast track video on artemisinin, the cancer bomb. Right. And it has great potential for curing cancer with no or minimal side effects when taken correctly. And we've been just bombarded with emails from all over the world since posting the fast track video on artemisinin. And we want to answer your questions about it on this fast track video as a public service and also to provide some information on a few of the complementary alternative treatments to cancer. Yeah, this is really something that we want to provide for you and also save me a lot of work because I answer all of your emails. And if we can have a video that summarizes all this, wouldn't that make it a lot easier? And that's what this is about. So what do people need to know? Well, first of all, this is an important breakthrough, probably, that should be looked into a lot more deep, deeply with our research. But it, it has some promising effects that I think are what we described so well in the first video, so I'll refer you back there if you'd like to learn more about the mechanism of action, because we don't have to reduplicate that in this. But it's important to know that you should have a, a qualified healthcare practitioner who is helping you to decide whether or not to use this and, uh, and to learn about what it does. And this is where it comes in for you to share this website and to share this the fast track video that's on artemisinin with your oncologist in case they're not familiar with it. Exactly, and I can't prescribe it for you because I'm not your doctor, but I can give you references which I give to everybody. I have four references I picked in, in particular that are extensive PowerPoint presentations in some of them that will give you a good idea of what artemisinin is and how it works from the technical point of view. So how do people get the artemisinin? That's a, you know, it's, it's a drug that's used to treat malaria today. So it's approved by the U.S. FDA uh, for the use in treating malaria. And so you can get it from your doctor or you can go online. And what I do 
is you just do a Google search and say, uh, where can I find artemisinin? And lots of resources come up. Okay, but people right now are probably thinking, well, I don't have malaria, so how do I get to take this? And this is where off-label use comes Exactly. In. It can be used off-label. We can use any drug that's prescribed or that's approved by the FDA in any way that we want if we take responsibility for it, and that's what we do when we use a drug called an off-label usage. So a person can... Uh, get it online, and they can get it through the pers- through a prescription from their From the doctor as well, that's right. Okay, so how does the doctor know, or how do you know, how to take it? Right, well, that's uh, part of what we described in, in the first video, but in actuality, it's important to know that artemisinin is, 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 has to be taken in a special way. The problem is, is that when you take artemisinin on a regular basis, it stops being absorbed by the intestinal tract in any significant way, probably within five to seven days. So what I recommend for my patients is to take it for four days a week. I take it on, say, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then for three days, don't. And then you can go back and recycle that same dose you were using, and it can be anywhere from two to 500 milligrams a day if it's taken orally. So it's, it's, it's a straightforward thing. Okay, so artemisinin is safe compared to chemotherapy. Oh, it's a but much there, different story. But there is a, a small concern, and what, what is that? Oh, I, far less than 1% of the time you see inflammation in the liver because, after all, we're putting a foreign chemical in the body. The liver has to detoxify it. And when it does, sometimes it causes an inflammatory response. I've used it in a number of my patients, and I've only seen one person who has had an allergic or whatever this toxic reaction is, we just stopped the drug and they, they were fine. And it reverses. And it reverses, yeah. So where does iron fit in with artemisinin? Yeah, that also was described in the first video, so you want to look at that. It's iron that is sequestered by cancer cells and by cells that are infected with microbes. And when they sequester iron, that's a good thing if you're going to use artemisinin because Artemisinin depends on having adequate amounts of iron in your body's cells to cause a reaction that kills the cell. And cancer cells hoard the iron, right? Exactly. Just like malaria cells do that, too. Exactly. And that's why when you uh, have cancer, that's a good thing to do. But you need to know, first of all, how much iron is in your body. So it's important to uh, to measure the amount of iron that's in your body. There are four blood tests that do that. And once you know that, you can determine whether or not you have to give iron, because if there's not enough iron in the body, it won't work well. Or if you're in the 5% of the population that has too much iron in a condition called hemochromatosis, you're probably going to have to be careful about how much you give, because then that iron will be also stored in your healthy cells, and you don't want to be causing problems in your healthy cells. Now, are there any other questions you can think of that people have been asking you in these emails? Well, the main thing that they wanted to know is how do you take it? Uh, would I prescribe it for them? And that answer is no. Uh, where can they get it? And uh, these are the things that we're really trying to answer in this video. So artemisin is only one suggestion for treatments. Mm-hmm. And on our website, drsaputo.com, we also have other complementary alternative uh, treatments. So you can go there and learn about maybe methyl jasminate and IV vitamin C and digitalis and insulated potential uh, insulin potentiated, potentiated therapies. therapies. Yeah, there are a lot of things it's meant as, a, as an <laughs> educational thing for you. I'm not your doctor, so I can't prescribe it. So I have to stress that you, if you're going to use this, the best thing to do is have a qualified healthcare practitioner, preferably your oncologist, support you through this. In my experience, I've found that most oncologists are willing to add this to mainstream chemotherapies particularly if they don't have other options. But if you have an integrative oncologist, that's the best because then you can start using things like what Vicki just mentioned in your treatment with or without mainstream chemotherapy. Well, we make, uh, you know, we like to report on different studies that have come out and the success rates, and Mm -hmm. we talk about the pros and the cons, and Mm -hmm. then we kind of like give our spin on some of these things. And I think that you owe it to yourself if you get a diagnosis of cancer to learn as much as you can mm. about different types of treatments and feel, you know, and think about what feels right for you. That's what, really right because if you can find an integrative oncologist, that's of course the best because that's an open minded person who wants to offer you the best of mainstream treatment for cancer as well as the best from complementary and alternative medicine. You should want nothing less.
Because so many times people just panic. Exactly. You know, and it's like, okay, I'll do whatever you whatever you say. But maybe you could even just tell a story of maybe a patient that you've had that have, have you know, when they've taken artemisinin and, and how that's helped them. Yeah, well, it's difficult because this is anecdotal evidence, and I've given it to a number of patients. I'd have to say probably 30 or 40. And one that comes to mind is, is a woman in her 60s who had a, uh, a far advanced lymphoma. And she was dying. Her, her, specs, or her scans, PET CT scan, showed that it was scattered throughout large portions of her body. She's now going on her fourth year of using artemisinin, and she's asymptomatic and doing really well. That's one case. What the, the thing I really want to point out, Vicki, is that we have a, an assessment, a health assessment, on drsabuto.com. It's, again, completely free. It takes about three minutes to, to fill out because it's a yes, no, or multiple choice. And instantly what come back, comes back after you answer those few questions are audios and videos that are appropriate, in my opinion, for you to look at to try and answer the questions that come up when you fill out this uh, health assessment. And we have over 2,600 audios and videos that we've made, videos that we've made together uh, on this site. So there's a, a wealth of information. And again, it never costs anything, and there are no ads, and it's something that's meant as a public service. So this whole idea of considering artemisinin as part of your treatment is a real thing to consider because in, in the experience I've had and from the research I've done, it should be evaluated by a qualified healthcare practitioner. And if you find, and, and that person finds that it's something to try, particularly if there's nothing else much left, it seems like we're adding something to the protocols that may make us do better if we have cancer. 